Hello! Welcome to the Advanced Woodwatcher tutorial. So let's begin. First of all, let me clear this out a bit. And now, if you look at the top left hand side, you have the menu button, the hamburger icon. If you press it, or if you just click and drag from the left side, you now have access to measurements list. So these are the saved measurements that you have done. You have access to tutorials. You have a couple of them in English and a couple of them in Romanian. You have access to events. So these are upcoming events that we will be hosting. You can share Woodwatcher. So if you press this button, you can share it using direct messaging or Gmail or WhatsApp or whatever method you prefer. You also have access to customer service. So if you press this button, you can get in touch directly with us on WhatsApp, on Facebook, or directly by email. You also have access to customer service on most pages. So if there is something that you want to ask or share feedback about, you can press this customer service button and then you can use the WhatsApp or the email. Let's go back. You have access to settings. Let's activate, so make sure the inventory module is activated. I will demo it in a bit. And if you, if you look over here, it says that I have 60 measurement credits. This means I can process 60 images. However, when I will be reaching zero, all I have to do is go up and click buy measurements. And now you can buy them on uh, the Google Play Store or on the Apple Store, right? Depending on your location, you will have a different currency and also a probably slightly different values. There, these are due to conversions. So the most uh, cost efficient way is to buy 100 credits, but you can even buy one credit. Okay. Always, so this is very important, always use a stable internet connection until the credits arrive. So when you buy the credits, you have to make sure you have a good internet connection. And you have to wait until all the credits arrive. And you can see that the 60 credits I have, there are 40 free credits and 20 paid credits. So I have 40 free credits some most of you will have 10 free credits because uh, during holidays there were different uh, um, promotions going on and some users got more free credits and the 20 credits is something I paid for with my credit card let's go back okay so now because I have the inventories uh, selected I have this export inventories PDF which allows me to select one or two inventories and when I export them a PDF file will be generated with all those inventories that I have a measure. So this is one inventory file with its associated data and this one is another one. Okay, let's go back and let me rotate. This is also something interesting. You can rotate the screen and I'll make it bigger Okay, let's press the measure button. Let's load an image from the gallery. Okay, let's, let's look at this one. I'll try to be... Okay, now. First question. What happens if not all the wood logs are of the same length? So let's suppose I have this log and this log of a different length. I can just pick a different color for them. In this case, it's red. And when I click on them, they will be marked. They will be painted. And let's assume all of the green ones are five meters and all of the red ones are six meters. So if I now go to result, because I have used two colors, I am given two options. So let's put in the reference length at two meters. The green ones, I said they are five meters, and the red ones are six meters. So if I now press compute, I now have 32 wood pieces, and each volume per marking is K 
calculated separately. So 8 meters and 2 meters. And again, I can save the measurement and I can export it to an Excel file. And in the Excel file, if you look at the mark, so some of them are green and some of them are red. Okay. Again, if I have the inventory data module selected, I have access to all this kind of information over here about user, the wood assortment, the wood species. Let me rotate it back. So I have access to all this uh, information. I can autofill all the, uh, the values. I can put in like uh, the transport ID EU 200 and source ID is forest ABC and destination ID is deposit uh, 123. And if I now press export to PDF, you can see that the metadata has been inputted as well as the colors, right? The markings for the, the length from 5 meters to 6 meters and the colors have also been exported. Let's go back. So, actually, coloring them gives us another opportunity. Let's say that for one reason or another, I want to ignore this and this. So, the ones that I have painted uh, blue. If I go to result, all I have to do is say, okay, these are 5 meters, these are 0 meters, which will be ignored, and these are 6 meters. And if I now press compute, as you can see, the blue ones have been completely ignored. So it's a different way of using the marking to ignore pieces, let's say maybe they're rotten or something. Okay, now let's go back. And there is something more I want to show you. In some countries, you are allowed to measure volume not by individual pieces, but as a whole. So if you go and press this button called density, let me make this screen a bit bigger. So there is this button called density. It creates an elastic around the wood pile. Uh, obviously the, wood, the elastic can be moved. So it has these uh, controls. And depending on where you pick it, it will influence the pile density, right? If you put it outside, it will take a, a lot of air gaps, so the pile density will be lower. So let's leave it as it was. Okay, so now you have the pile density, which means that you can compute volume in a different way. You can multiply the height times the width times the depth or the height of the logs times the pile density, right? So you have an apparent volume which has wood and air gaps. And if you multiply it by the pile density, the pile density only represents the solid wood, not the air gaps. So you end up with actually computing the volume of wood, ignoring the air gaps, which is something very interesting. And again, you can have the pile density, once you've calculated it, if you go to the result, if you go to, um, auto field known fields you can see the pile density is also in, uh, transferred you can actually input the pile height and the pile depth and these information will also make their way to the PDF file okay let us discuss something more interesting though if we go back to the image let me hide the density and let's actually think about how the algorithm works 
So you see the wood pile over here, but what the algorithm sees is this. So imagine the algorithm has actually looked at every pixel in the image and has actually created a very close approximation, very, very nice approximation for each polygon, right? Even when they're overlapping, like here, right? So this is how the algorithm works. And then using the raw detection radius, it creates a... Uh, circle with the same area as the area of the polygon but if you go here you have actual access to all types of radii for example enclosing mean ellipse creates an ellipse that can enclose the polygon or if you go to inscribe max circle it creates a circle that can be inscribed in the polygon and this is very interesting because for these two red pieces that I have selected, they're the most, uh, they are cut from the bottom of the tree, so they are close to the ground. So this means that they have a very different taper just at the end. They have a sort of withening, a sort of skirt. So this means that if I have an inscribed max circle inside the polygon, it's actually closer to the true volume of this piece assuming I only have access from one side, like in this picture, and I can only take one measurement. Okay, so what this means is now having this type of radius selected, like in Scribe Max Circle, when I go to the result, it will be taken into account, right? So if I fill the fields, you will see that the detection radius is now set to inscribe Max Circle, right? So you always know the type of radius that you have selected. And depending on the type of wood, uh, I mean the wood species and the wood usage, for example, fuel wood, it might make sense to change the inscribed mass circle or different radii. And it also might make more sense to use the density, the pile density measurement instead of the individual wood piece measurement. Okay. I think that is all that I want to show you for now. So thank you very much. In conclusion, think of this tool as a very configurable and customizable tool that gets the job done. And I wish you happy, happy wood volume measuring and increased productivity using Woodwatcher. Thank you very much. Bye bye.